Hello Lawn Mowing people, what I'm going to talk about today is having a business plan. What is a business plan? A business plan is a document that sets out your business's goals, strategies and how you plan to achieve them. So basically a business plan is a step-by-step -step guide on how you want to set up your business and it's meant to be a bit of a roadmap so it just gives you an idea of what you're doing with your business and, and where you're heading so you know where you are at all times. Business plans are also a must when you're doing certain things, like if you're applying for a startup loan, if you're applying for a grant, uh, and just for keeping your business on track. Writing a good business plan doesn't have to be an absolutely huge job. There's easy ways of going about it, and it doesn't have to be an absolutely massive document. All it has to be is a document that'll let the person that you're talking to know what you intend to do, or if you're writing it for yourself, it's something that you refer to. So you've got to be clear and focused about what you want to achieve, and you've got to choose the type of business plan that works for you. Now, if you're looking for funding from investors, you'll need a far more formal plan than you will if you're just writing it out for yourself. But one thing that you really want to do is keep the plan short, keep it simple, and keep it easy to understand. Don't go waffling on about things that are totally irrelevant. They don't want to read a Stephen King novel, they want to read a business plan, they want to understand it as soon as possible. And also try and keep the business plan so it's not long and not boring. You want just you want something that's punchy. Now, as far as getting stats go, you can always get stats from uh, a government department, from the Department of Statistics. And uh, in New Zealand, you just go to the business website and have a look. And it's a great resource for businesses in New Zealand and Australia and, and the rest of the world. They all have government departments in, in charge of statistics. So that's a good place to get your basic information from. Now, another thing is to get out there and speak with your customers or speak for your target customers. Ask them what they like, ask them what they don't like. And when you start mowing lawns for people, ask them what they like and what they don't like, because this will give you an idea of what you really want to deliver. And this will give you a really good idea of, of what people are expecting. So another thing is to do a SWOT analysis. Now, you've probably heard of a SWOT analysis. It's used to identify strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities, and threats from a company or from an organization. And, uh, and remember that sometimes when you're talking about competition, you're not just talking about other lawn mine businesses. Competition is also the big box store that's down the road that sells cheap mowers. They're your competition as well because people will have a choice. They'll either contact you or they'll go and buy a mower. So be aware of the competition. And if you're looking at an area with uh, 10,000 houses, remember that those 10,000 houses do not have 10,000 lawns that need mowing because some of those guys will be doing it themselves. Now, with your business plan, if you need help with it, it's good if you can have an advisor or a mentor or somebody that can look over it and uh, and just give just give it the okay before you go handing it into a bank or anything like that. If you've got uh, if you've got a friend that deals with things like this, and perhaps you can ask him to have a look and maybe give you some feedback. Now, what do you find in a winning business plan? For starters, you need to define your business. So you need to say exactly what you're doing. So you, you say, okay, I'm doing things like mowing lawns, I'm doing trees, but nothing over three meters, I'm doing gardens, uh, I'm doing water blasting. So you could be so just list the things that you're doing and explain how your business is going to run and what services you're going to offer, what equipment that you need in order to do that service. And when you're getting to the bit about competition, do a little bit of research there. Why don't you just find a few lawn mine con contractors near you and give them a call and give them a test and see how they're running. And you want to answer questions like, did they answer the phone? Uh, if they didn't answer the phone, you left a message, did they call back? And did they actually arrive to do the quote? You'll be surprised how many lawn mine contractors just do not turn up. How much did they quote? And also when they turned up, how professional did they look? How tidy did everything look? Were they wearing uniforms with their vehicle sign written? Did they have carts? And also, do they offer other services? And if so, what are those services? Right, so now it's time to set goals and objectives for your own business. 
usually what I do is when I start off with a lawn mowing business, I say to them, uh, a good goal to start off with is try and get a couple of new customers on your books each week. Because if you can get a couple of customers on your books each week, then that means that after doing that for a year, you could have over 100 customers. And that's a good size business. Another good goal would be to set yourself a turnover target. So you can say, okay, in the first week, this is what I want to turn over. In the second week, I want to build it to this. Or I want to increase my turnover by $50 a week. Or you could even go down to the hourly level and say, hey, if I'm out for 10 hours, I want to make at least 500 bucks. You can, you can do things like that, and this will give you an idea of, of where you're going to be heading. Now, once you've written all of this out, uh, the, what you want to do is just right at the very end, you write your executive summary. Now, this is just a brief overview of your business plan, and it should include things like what you intend to call your business, your mission statement, and key objectives. Now, when I say mission statement, you this here is the thing that, that people like to see on a business plan. But to be honest, a mission statement when you're a one person business doesn't actually mean a lot because a mission statement is more like so everybody in the team can be on the same page. So if you're working, if you've got a few people working for you, it could be a good idea to put, to make one. Now, now that you've done that, it's time to work out a marketing plan. The first thing that I'd actually do is list my business on Google Maps because that's free and it's fairly simple to do. Uh, if you need a website, you can set up a free website from using Google My Business as well. And uh, then I'd probably put in a budget of maybe $150 a month or something like this. And this should bring you in a couple of new customers a week. And this is the same sort of campaign that I run for the guys that I run marketing for. And it's it works really, really well and it just gets you those phone calls every week and gets you lots of new work coming in. Another thing that you should really be thinking about is sign writing your vehicle, because when you turn up at a job, if you've got a sign written vehicle, you're much more likely to get somebody to come along and ask you if you can do their lawn as well or give them a quote. And uh, also it gives people a bit of recognition because if they see your vehicle traveling around town, then they become familiar with the name of your business and your logo. And so it gives you a little bit of an identity. And when people remember businesses, they're more, like, more likely to ring them. If they go on to search and they search for lawn mowing businesses and they get a list of half a dozen, they're more than likely to go with the one that they've seen the vehicle traveling around their neighborhood. That's just how people are. Now, another thing that you could do is deliver flyers. Now, you'd have to, deliver a lot of flyers to get any results at all because over the years flyers have got worse and worse as far as uh, results and bang for your buck but if you had enough money to put into it if you could put out something like 5,000 flyers and then put them out again let's say six weeks later or something like that and just do five kilometers around your house you'd probably start getting quite good results because that'll also people would see you again, that they'll know, know that you're local. And if they're searching, they might gravitate towards your name. Now, another thing is Facebook marketing. I get asked a lot about that and you, it does work. You do get lawn mowing customers, but I tend to find that the customers I get through Facebook aren't that great. And also the geotargeting is pretty bad. I remember I was running a campaign for a guy in Auckland and he was getting calls from Hamilton. And I mean, that's over 100 kilometers away. That's just, uh, there's just no excuse for that. And also the uh, quality of customers isn't that great through Facebook. You will get customers, but there'll be, the work will be a little bit more transient. So uh, I'd actually put my money into Google Ads. So I think you get much more solid customer base from there. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to outline your financial projections. So uh, you need to do a cash flow. And I've actually got a link to a, to a generic cash flow below this video, and you can click on that and you can go through it. And basically what it does is it works out what's coming in the business and what's going out. And you just project what you're going to earn for the next 12 months, what you're going to spend for the next 12 months, and your cash flow will tell you whether you're, make, whether you're going to make money or not. The next thing to do is develop an operations plan, which is just basically saying that you're going to turn up at a lawn, you're going to get the weed eater off first, 
you're going to go around with the weed eater, then you're going to go around with the mower, and then you're going to use the blower, et cetera, et cetera. So you just basically walk through how you're going to approach all these different jobs and uh, and what safety equipment you're going to be using and uh, what jobs that you're going to be tackling and how you're going to fit this in. Just basically what they want is just the day-to-day -day operations of your business and how you intend to run it. Once you've got your business plan, then all you have to do is follow it. But remember that your business plan isn't going to be set in stone. So you want to revise and review it as needed. But do remember that you'll need to re revise it from time to time. A good business plan would be a living and breathing document. So you'd be pulling it every, out every few months and seeing how you are as far as being on target. So uh, that's all I've got to say. If you've got uh, any questions about a business plan or if you want to run a business plan, by somebody, you can always contact me and uh, and I'd be happy to have a look at it for you and tell you what I think. Yeah, that's all I've got to say about business plans. So get out there, mow lawns, have fun and happy lawn mowing people.